You're watching Wayback Machine 1, Classic TV. Please subscribe today. and its 96,000 dealers everywhere present Suspense. This is the story of Paul Weston, chemist. He used to work for the government in Washington, research, until his services were no longer needed. For two years, he couldn't get a job because of what happened down there. His record was not good. But he's all set now. Acme Petroleum Company, a small outfit here in Chicago. Been here three months now. Is your report ready? Mm, in a minute. Still love me? Maybe. Where's that new ring I gave you? Wouldn't you like to know? A token of affection. Where is it? He's worried. Yeah, you bet your life I'm worried. I put bucks out on that ring. <gasps> you pawned it. Dope. Why? Now, that's no place to be wearing an engagement ring. You wanted it kept secret, didn't you? Oh, only until I was in the clear here. It's all right now. Wes, you sure? Mm -hmm. Sure, I'm sure. You wear that spark the way you want to. Congratulations. Hello. Oh, oh what a lot. Right office. Well, uh, wh what's it about? I don't know. Huh. You better put your jacket on, Paul. Mr. French has visitors with him. Take it easy, Wes. Don't worry. Just don't see that boils over. You watch your temper. Don't you boil over. Come in, Mr. Weston. Sit down. Gentlemen, this is Paul Weston. They have some questions to ask you. Do I have to answer them? Well, that's up to you. My name is Richardson. This is Mr. Camel. They're yeah, from the government, Mr. Weston. Mm -hmm. Yes, I know. I'm allergic. Where's Marilyn Ross? I don't know. When's your last deal? Mm. Last time I answered that question was in Cleveland. Marilyn Ross is here in Chicago. So what? You've seen her. Look, the last time I saw her was in Washington two years ago. We don't believe All you. All right, you won't believe me. What can I do about it? Every time I get settled, you come around asking questions. Who do I know? Who are my friends? Well, I don't know anybody. I have no friends. And I guess I have no job now either. Of course, I want to be fair, Mr. Weston, but this sure, plan is accepting defense yeah. uh, oh, contract. Oh, save the spiel, Mr. French. I heard it all before. I quit. I, I can't believe that that boy is mixed up in this. Mr. French, the commies have an agent in this plant. It's our job to find out who it is. We have a hunch Weston can lead us to him. Thanks very much for your trouble. That's wrong. What happened? The guillotine. Oh, yeah. no. Routine government inspection. Finish. But why? You haven't seen that girl for two years. Yeah, try to make them believe that. I'm sorry, Doc. I'm just not a good risk. I've it. never tried, Paul. I've never asked for details. But maybe if I could present your case to oh, Mr. There Frank, are no details. I hardly knew the girl. Her name was Marilyn Ross. She worked in the government office. One day I had to go to that office to get some information for the lab where I worked. Marilyn Ross happened to be the girl who looked it up for me, and that was the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Well, apparently little Marilyn had a collection of boyfriends in strategic spots. They flipped her information from time to time. And, well, when the government started to close in, she skipped. Well, didn't you suspect anything? A person like that? A person like what? Is it like anybody else? Nice-looking girl with some red hair. 
No, she never stopped to ask me anything. If she had, I would have told her to jump in the Potomac. Of course you would. But, Paul, I mean recently. Since you've been here in Chicago, you haven't joined any organizations. Well, you haven't gone to any meetings. If I've been associating with anybody subversive, they've been right here in this plant. What do you mean by that? What's the matter? Oh, everybody's so touchy for her. You shouldn't have said that. Oh, no, no, I didn't mean that. I mean... As long as I've been in Chicago, the only people I've associated with, except for the landlady and a couple of bartenders, are right here in this place. Now, if nobody minds, I'm going to go and hunt up a couple of those bartenders. Where? Will I see you tonight? Look, baby, the way things stand, the best thing you can do is keep away from me. Right now, I'm the kiss of death. What are you going to do? i got a little program. I'm going to clear myself once and for all, for both our sakes. Hey, that's number two on the agenda. What's number one? Take the body out and souse it. Bye, yeah. Hey, that was Scotch. Sure. You know, the trouble with the world. Everybody's always getting in everybody else's business. Give me that. May I have a light, please? I thank you. <laughs> what a coincidence, some would say. Marilyn? I wondered if you'd recognize me. One for the lady, too, please. What huh? lady? What are you doing in Chicago? Business. Have anything to do with the Acme plant? I used to work there. So I heard. From inside the plant? Oh, I have my sources of information. Oh, they're all inside, I guess, huh? Oh, Paul, you want to know too much. Look, um, I'm all alone in Chicago. Why don't you take me home? Oh, I'd like to do that. Good. Sure. Ready? Yes. You always were so accommodating, Paul. Into something or? Oh, no. It's parked outside. Don't worry. I drove. Breakfast is ready. Coffee black, Paul? Yeah, black. Well, I really blacked out last night. What did you put in that drink? Darling, aspirin is in the medicine cabinet. Still, we have a thoughtful pal. Still two, Paul? Yeah, still You take marmalade, Paul. I don't seem to remember. Oh, you're slipping, Marilyn, if that's your name. Oh, don't be so suspicious. I just don't happen to go for your type, see? I'm sore. Well, I tried to keep from getting from you getting involved in Washington, remember? I'm not talking about Washington. I'm talking about right now. Well, what about now? Look, baby, you didn't pick me up last night just by coincidence. You didn't get me here just to keep your company, Miss Lonely Heart. No? No. You got me here because you knew just by getting me here, I'd convict myself of being a liar and also a traitor to my country. Oh, really? You shouldn't use those naughty words so early in the morning, dear. Well... I know when I'm late. You shouldn't give up so easily. No, no job, no money, no nothing. I mean, I'm open to offers. What's the proposition? 
Well, it all depends how you like the people I work for, Paul. Oh, politics never bothered me, if that's what you mean. So, if you were offered a sum of money, you... Uh... Depends how much. A thousand? Does he sound convincing to you, Joy? Well, this is her last assignment. Marilyn Ross's party days are over. <laughs> well, you'll have to talk it over with a friend of mine. He lives in the building. I'll phone you. Yeah, yeah, do that. Sure you want to do this, Paul? Sure, I'm sure. What are you whispering for? I can't believe it. I don't believe it. Get out of here. Who do you think you are, Dick Tracy? Get out of here oh, before you get Lord, hurt, Paul. This is a pretty quick conversion, baby. Who are you trying to kid? Paul. Oh, you don't mind the intrusion. I used my key. Oh, Louis. Um, Louis, this is Paul. He seems interested. Yes, yeah, so I heard. <laughs> well, I'll come right to the point. The company you work for had contact with Stanley Aircraft Corporation. Yeah, we made a rust preventive compound. <laughs> yes, I know. There was considerable correspondence on the subject. What else do you know? <laughs> You'd be surprised. At this very minute, there are a few sheets of important data at ACME that have nothing to do with rust preventive. That data comes from Stanley. I don't get it. Well, Stanley is running performance tests on a new jet power plant for its Army interceptor fighter. Unfortunately, the FBI clamped down when they realized that the information had gone out. Our man at Stanley was caught. The data was traced to Acme before our agent at Acme... Agent? Well, I didn't know you had an agent at Acme. I know that place pretty well. I was saying that our agent at Acme he did not have time to pass the papers along. He had to hide them in the plant. Does he still have them on him? Well, he is now under instructions not to expose himself by making further moves. Oh, well, why didn't he just flush him down the drain? Oh, he's done much better than that. He taped them very neatly to the top right-hand drawer of your laboratory table. I think you recall that drawer, Weston. I see. Uh -huh. <laughs> Yeah, on me, a frame looks good, huh? Well, Miss Weston and I, and I thought it would, yes. Oh, that explains her <laughs> showing up out of the blue. What's the proposition? Well, we'd prefer not to lose those papers. We can't afford to risk our man to get them, but uh, <laughs> if you'd like to try... How do you know I won't go to the FBI and tell them everything? Oh, we've thought of that, too. But you just try convincing them that somebody else pasted those papers to that drawer. Especially after they uh, saw you and Miss Ross together last night. <laughs> very neat. <laughs> yes, isn't it? You'll find that our agent there is very efficient. Now, he'll be in the plant tonight late working. If there's any trouble, you can count on him. Is everything clear? Mm-hmm. When do I pick up the money? Well, I'll meet you tonight at 10. I'll have it with me. Where? Uh, beneath the statue of Lincoln in the park down by the lake. You know the spot? Sure. I always thought it was a good place for a murder. <laughs> <laughs> That's very funny. So did I. Well, now we're going to meet our agent of Acme, huh? Be careful, Paul. As if you cared. FBI. I want to give you a tip. You know the Acme plant? Looking for something, Mr. Weston? Mr. French. Yes, come into my office, Weston.
return to our suspense story in just a moment. But before we do, I'd like to have you meet one of the elite, that delightful doggy dowager and that prize-winning canine, Felis of Rambley. Now, there's Felis just starting out with her own chauffeur and limousine for a nice, quiet afternoon's drive. But all at once, wow, or uh, rather, bow wow. Felice's car bounced all over the place, and Felice really put her driver in the doghouse for allowing worn-out spark plugs to spoil her ride. <laughs> well, obviously what that car needed to keep it from going to the dogs was a new set of ignition-engineered Autolite spark plugs. Now, here's why I say Autolite. You see, inside every car on the road today, there's a distributor, a coil, battery, generator, spark plug wire, and a set of spark plugs. And all together, they go to make up what's known as the car's ignition system. Now, friends, when all those parts are functioning properly, you get the smooth performance and the economical operation that you want from your car. And that's where Autolite comes in. Because, you see, Autolite engineers design all those parts that go to make up the complete ignition system, which is used on many leading makes of America's finest cars. And that's why we say that Autolite spark plugs are ignition engineers to work as a perfect team with the rest of your car's ignition system. And that's why we say that Autolite spark plugs are world famous for quality and dependability. Now, I'm sure that you've heard the story about the chain being only as strong as its weakest link. Well, that goes for the ignition system of your car, too. And that's why it's so important to have your spark plugs checked regularly to make sure that these vital links in your ignition chain of action are functioning properly. And it's important, too, to remember that if replacements are needed, be sure and insist on ignition-engineered Autolite spark plugs. Whether you choose the standard or the resistor type, take it from me. You can't buy better spark plugs for your car. Why don't you take a tip from me and visit your Autolite spark plug dealer tomorrow. Remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. <laughs> Second act of Deadfall, starring Sidney Hassel and Barry Nelson. Jane, what are you doing here? Well, I got a telephone call from Mr. French. He wants to see me. Oh. What is it? What happened? What are you doing here? Come on, Jane. Let's get out of here. You didn't get a call from French tonight. I don't understand. I don't want you to get involved in this, and you didn't see me either. All right, you go on home now, and I'll call you when I can. I don't know. We can always pick her up. Go this way. What's the hurry, Weston? What, 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 what's up? Well, you got a telephone call saying you were going to break into the Acme plant tonight. Oh, no, I didn't have to break in. I never turned in my key. Well, we were just uh, waiting for you to bring it out anyway. Oh, bring what out? Well, whatever it was you were sent in for. Oh, I just went in to get a notebook. Well, you see, he doesn't, he doesn't even blush. You know, we were leaning backwards to be nice to you because you're such a nice guy, but don't push your credit too far, huh? Oh, may I go now? Mm-hmm. For the present. Oh, Weston. Where's your girlfriend? Marilyn Ross. I left her in the apartment. <laughs> you and your women. No, he means the other one, you know, the little one with the glasses. We haven't enough men to keep track of all your women. Oh, you're breaking my heart. You can go now. By the way, it was the woman who called to tip us off about you. Nice, sexy voice. Go ahead. Thanks for letting me know. Oh, by the way, Weston, uh, you haven't seen anything of your friend Dr. Lowry tonight, have you? Well, Mr. French... Miss Ross, this is Richardson. Listen, we've just got word. Get out fast. Move. 
They're on to you. Hello. Hello. What do you think? Well, weren't you supposed to meet Louie in the park? I got business with you. Well, I've got to get out of here. You're not going anywhere. Did you get into trouble at the plant? Should I have had? Uh, You're kind of a rotten type girl, aren't you, Marilyn? Whose idea was it? Yours or his? It was his. Yeah, the man said you had a nice, sexy voice. You call the FBI. A girl likes to have something nice said about her once in a while. Yeah, yeah. I was supposed to be caught with the goods on me, wasn't I? That's enough. Yes, I suppose that was the idea. What kind of a thing are you? Oh, leave me alone. I don't understand you. I tried to stay clear of you in Washington, but you had to stick to me. Why? All right, all right. I like you. I found you exciting. Well, I warned you to get out this morning. <sighs> Who are you trying to kid? Everything you're saying going up these wires. Why didn't you whisper? But they're not at home. They're out in the park. They'll be looking for you soon here if you don't get out. You're worried, aren't you? You're so worried you even call the FBI. I would have done that even if Louie hadn't told me to. Just to get you out of circulation for a while, you fool. Why? None of your business. Look what you've done. Oh, look, Marilyn, why don't you get out of this racket? Listen, I never waved a flag in my life, but let me tell you something. Every time that you or Louie or your agents start rapping my country, I'm going to hit you over the head with the flag and the flagpole and the stars and the stripes and the gold eagle. Oh, Marilyn, why don't you get out of this racket? Racket? It was a religion with me. You can do a lot of strange things for something you believe in. Do you still believe it? No, I don't. Well, then, for Pete's sake, get out! Oh, it's not as easy as all that, Paul. No, when you've stopped believing as I have, you're, you're still stuck with it. Stuck for everything you've ever done, everyone you've ever known. And just to get on, on and on, that's all. You know that we believed every word they told us? And now? Now we're all running to the nearest platform, trying to wash our dirty little disillusionment. In public. You know that the man in Washington killed himself two years ago because of something he passed on to me? He was about to be discovered, so he, he killed himself. He left a note, and that's why I had to disappear like that. Now, do you see what kind of a life I've lived? Why I can't? Why I have to go on and on and on? I hate them, Paul, even more than you do now. Then stop at nothing. Believe me, Paul. Good evening. Louis. Well, what took you so long? Was I so long, Marilyn? I had to tell him the story of my life, waiting for you to get there. I ran out of material. Well, you certainly can pull the wool over his eyes, can't you, Marilyn? What's the matter, Louis? Matter? Yes. I mean, nothing. Nothing at all. Joey's got the car downstairs. Come on, Boy Scout. No, not that way. Through the bedroom, down the fire escape. The car's at the back. Where are we going? You want your thousand dollars, don't you? Sure. You've got those letters, haven't you? Sure. Well, we had a meeting tonight, remember? Beneath the statue of Lincoln in the park. No. In our uh, racket, Miss Ross, there's no room for bourgeois sentiment. Or have you forgotten? Come on, let's go. You too, Marilyn. Me? What do you want me along for? Well, just say I like your company. All right, I'll get my coat, Louis. Never mind. You won't be cold for long. Come on, let's go. Give me those letters now. Sure. <gasps> He's out cold. Come on, let's get out of here before Joe comes up to the fire escape. What are you doing here? I was told you'd be here, Wes. Who told you? We have mutual friends. Where are the letters? What a sucker I've been. Where are the letters? Louie's got them. He's in there. Lock the door. Yes. Louie. Louie, we've got to get out of here. Yeah. So you were Louie's boyfriend all the time. You were just using me, Isaac. You, you were our agent at that thing. And I killed French to save you. Why? You were useful to us. 
He found the letters before you did. I couldn't let him tell who was in the plant. I wouldn't if I were you. Well, it might be Joey. Joey has a key. Oh. Oh. the whole neighborhood. Where's Louie? He's in there. Can we take her out of here? Come on. Well, we finally caught up with her, Elaine, huh? Yeah. What? You two know each other? Uh-huh. He's got letters on him. He didn't give them to Louie. Yeah, you want them? Oh, I'll put a match to them or keep them as a souvenir. Oh, thanks a lot. They're just uh, bait. Uh, our deadfall. What you might call a trap. <laughs> bait, huh? Mm-hmm. I see. That makes me a sucker all the way around. What am I supposed to do now? I'd like to know that. Well, don't worry. Elaine will take care of you. She's no use to us anymore, as far as the party is concerned. Her name is Mud. Oh, by the way, uh, Weston, your job is waiting for you. Sorry to have caused you so much trouble. Well, I don't know what to call you, babe. Marilyn or Gilly? Just babe. I like the way you see it. Huh. Have a nice seat. I... Uh, Afraid I'll never be able to trust you again. Oh, <laughs> you know. As sure as my name is Horace Harloff, this is Thriller. You're watching classic TV on Wayback Machine 1.